the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Rated by independent research, the most popular West Coast program in radio history. And Signal gasoline is tops, too. Tops in quality. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal circle sign in yellow and black that identifies friendly dealer-owned Signal service stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story. Dark Future. The feeling of foreboding Hal Parker had felt when he'd entered the fortune teller's tent was stronger than ever when he left. And as he shouldered his way down the tanbark lane between the carnival concessions, he tried to put his finger on it. After all, he was in the clear, comfortable and sure of himself in one of the new suits he purchased. And there was still well over $29,000 in new bills back in his hotel room. Twenty-nine out of the 30,000 he'd uh, withdrawn from the Midland Bank. So it was ridiculous to feel this way. Crazy to imagine he saw something strange and accusing in the dark eyes of Jaru, the Hindu fortune teller. But as he walked up to Millie at the orange aid stand, the nervous, depressed feeling was still there. Put some okay, orange in it. Okay. Well... What's the matter with you? Nothing, why? You look like some bad man stole all your marbles. How about some orange aid? Extra special tonight. We're using orange. <laughs> okay. So you want a Cupid doll? Yeah, it costs me five bucks. You want it? Mm, thanks. Here you are. One dime. Okay. Oh, gosh, you seem to be out of change. Uh, can you break a ten? Yeah, I guess so. The carnival keeps us in change. They have to. The customers sure don't. Fifty, one, two, three, four, five, and ten. Millie. Yeah? About our date tonight. Would it be all right to make it tomorrow night instead? Uh, oh, I thought you had something on your mind. It's a, a business appointment. I'm sorry to do it. Oh, but... don't mind me, Angel. I'll make out. Moran and I will go to our room together and she can tell my fortune. Ought to be an exciting evening. <laughs> Of course, you couldn't tell her what made it so important, could you, Hal? That when Jaru, the crystal gazer, suggested you see him after closing time, there was a look in his eyes, something in his deep, quiet voice that cut through the gloom of his tent like one of the oriental daggers hanging on the wall. The lights of the carnival concessions are winking out one by one when you walk up to the entrance to find Jaru waiting. Salam, Sahib Parker. I am grateful you have decided to honor me once more. You, uh, you said you had something more to tell me. Yes. Here is the inner chamber. You will sit on the chair, please. What is it, Jaru? Perhaps it is not important. But then that is for the crystal to tell. Go on. As you wish, Sahib. When you were here before, I tell you many things. I see in the crystal a house of money. Is that so important? Patience, Sahib. Also, crystal gave me a name of bank. A name like Midland Bank, yes? The crystal? Why don't you be honest, Jaru? I mentioned it to Millie Olmstead. She told her roommate, Marana. Marana told you. 
So let's forget the hocus pocus about the crystal, shall we? Your manner has changed since you were here before, Sahib. But we will go on. I see now in crystal the face of another man who work in same bank. I see also a name like, how you say, Macy. John Macy? What about him? He is being punished for stealing much money, $30,000. Yeah. That was in the paper six months ago, so what? You spend much money, Sahib. Too much for man who work for other man. That is funny thing, yes? Yeah? Is that all you have to tell me? For the present. But Jaru is hopeful you will be interested in further readings. The crystal never rests. Are you asking me to come back? Tomorrow night, at this hour? Sorry, Jaru, I'm afraid you I... You will be here tomorrow night, Sahib? I see. Uh, what do I owe you for the reading? Mm, nothing, Sahib. This is... How you say? On the house? You manage to appear calm as you leave the tent, hoping somehow that Jaru doesn't realize how close he is to the truth. It's unbelievable, Hal, that now, six months after you told yourself it was all over, six months after you watched John Macy go to prison for the money you embezzled, this man can smile across the table and tell you things that no one, even at the height of Macy's trial, even suspected. Almost as if Jaru actually saw it in the crystal ball. The next afternoon at the bank, Mr. Wilsey, the manager, called you into his office. And you find there's a more concrete basis for Jaru's revelation. Yes, Mr. Wilsey. Oh, oh, Hal, uh, this is Inspector Dale. How do you do? Inspector? And uh, Mrs. John Macy. Mrs. Macy? Oh, oh, uh, oh, yes, how do you do? My husband, John, he told me a great deal about you, Mr. Parker. Yes, we, uh, we were good friends. I know. That's why I suggested to Mr. Wilsey that you'd be the best one to help us. Oh? Inspector Dale here has run on to something, Hal. I want you to take this list of serial numbers, have it mimeographed, and distribute it to all the tellers. Yes, sir. Now, you don't have to tell them why, but uh, all currencies to be checked against the list immediately. And if any bills are taken in carrying those numbers, I'm to be notified right away. Of course. Uh, uh, Mr. Wilsey, I, I don't mean to be inquisitive, but... Uh... Oh, I'm sorry, Hal. We didn't intend hiding anything from you. Uh, these serial numbers were taken from some of the stolen bills. The first we've been able to locate. Don't you see, Mr. Parker? If we can find out who turned them in or, or trace them back to him some way, John will be cleared. Well, I, uh, I hope so, uh, Mrs. Macy, especially for your sake. But I, uh, well, frankly, I went over your husband's records myself at the time. And the evidence was so conclusive. The records were doctored. Someone else right here at the bank now, must have... Now, now, Mrs. Macy, please. We're all trying to help. The inspector here is working hard in the case, and Hal and I will do everything we can to help. Won't we, Hal? Yes, yes, I will personally take care of everything, Mrs. Macy. We'll do everything we can. With the prologue of Dark Future, the Signal Oil Company is bringing you another strange story. By the Whistler. But now here's some hot weather mathematics for drivers. Take the temperature of the day, add 2,800 degrees, the temperature inside the cylinder head of the average motor. That adds up to a lot of heat. Good reason why the cooling system of your car has to be in top condition for summer driving. If yours hasn't been checked recently, why not drop by your signal dealers for an inspection? Perhaps your radiator has become choked with sludge and rust. If so, signal stations have special radiator cleaning compound to restore cooling efficiency. To stop small leaks, signal dealers have radiator sealer. An even new car should add rust preventive to the radiator to guard against future corrosion. Also, signal dealers have finest quality fan belts and radiator hoses and will install them while you wait. You see, signal stations are much more than places to fill up with Signal's famous go-farther gasoline and Signal premium motor oil. 
Wherever you see signal circle sign in yellow and black, there you will also find complete signal service and fine quality accessories to help your car run better, look better, and last longer. And now, back to the whistler. Yes, Hal. There was a better explanation for Jaru's vision in the crystal ball, wasn't there? A more concrete one involving the discovery of several of the bills you passed in a nearby town when you bought those clothes. And a small item in the newspaper Jaru must have seen before he called you in for the uh, private reading. Yes, Hal, you were careful. And you're still pretty sure that the bills you spent in other cities cannot be traced back to you. You leave the corridor outside Mr. Wilsey's office, walk back toward your teller's cage, and then with your hand on the door, it hits you. The bill, Hal. That $10 bill you gave to Millie last night. The only stolen bill directly traceable to you. Miss Connor. Yes, Mr. Parker? If anyone asks for me, tell them I'll be back in a few minutes. Get Reeves to take over. <laughs> The carnival is just beginning to come to life, making preparations for opening when you arrive 15 minutes later and run up to the orange aid stand. Millie! Hal, what are you doing here in the daytime? Millie, will you do me a favor? Huh? Uh, you remember the orange aid I brought here last night? Yeah. Uh, I paid, it, paid for it with a $10 bill. Oh, broke, huh? Well, it serves no, you no, right... No, 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 listen, I've got to have it back, that bill. I'll give you singles for it. But I don't carry cash around with me. What did I... you do with it? Think, Millie, what did you do with all it? All right, all right, I'm trying. See, that ten. Oh, I know, I, I gave it to Marana. Marana, your roommate, you gave it to her. Well, what's so terrible about that? She had a lot of change and she wanted to change it for a ten. Why? How should I know? Why not ask her? Oh, here she is now. Marana, you want to speak with me, Mem Saeed? Yes, Marana. Remember that ten spot I gave you last night? Ten spot? The ten dollar bill. Oh. Oh, yes. Have you got it with you? No, Saeed. Where is it? I give it to Jaru, Saeed. Jaru? He asked me for it, Saeed. Is it something wrong? I, uh... No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's nothing. I'll ask Jaru himself about it. Uh, if I see him tonight. Well, Saeed, you have honored me for third time. I'm grateful. You asked me to come back. Suppose we don't waste time on this Hindu magic. What do you got to tell me? I will not, as you say, waste time. It is my business to read future in crystal, but... Yeah. But in your case, Sahib, I find future is not clear. You see, trouble is not child of future. She is child of past. And Crystal shows past very clearly. I see. Much more clear than last night, Saeed. I see last night man taking money. Perhaps man was Macy. Perhaps man was you, Saeed. Now it is clear. Man was you. You might be making a bad guess, Jaru. No, Saeed. Jaru only tells what he sees. Is that uh, all you have to tell me? Perhaps. I think, Sahib, police will have more faith in Crystal than you. Sorry, I'm not playing. Uh, is this, uh, this reading on the house, too? No, Sahib. There is a charge. How much? Fifteen thousand dollars. You must be crazy. For such money, Crystal will show brighter future for you. I don't know what they call this in India, but it's blackmail here. Over here, you've got to have more to go on than a crystal ball, Sahib. I have more than crystal balls, Sahib. Oh? I have $10 bill. In late paper tonight, you will find list of numbers. The police are seeking further clues, Sahib. Perhaps this will... All right, wait a minute, wait a minute. All right. All right, you win. When do you want the money? Perhaps at an early hour tomorrow. I'll have it here tomorrow night. 
What about 7 o'clock? That would be a quiet time. We could be alone. Is this the end of it now? How do I know you won't be back at me again? You know that? Because you trust me. Yes, Sahib. In the crystal I see after tomorrow night, for you there is bright future. You haven't much choice, have you, Hal? Jaru knows as surely as if he actually could look into the past. And that means you must pay him $15,000 to buy his silence. It's on your mind the next day at the bank. You're nervous, jittery, almost unable to do your work. But somehow you get through the day. And that night at 7, you arrive at Jaru's tent as agreed. The evening rush has not yet started and the carnival grounds are almost deserted. You have the money under your arm and a cardboard shoebox as you slip into the tent and Jaru rises to greet you. Salam, Sahib. For the fourth time, you have honored Jaru. Yes, Jaru. For the fourth and last time. Yes. The last time, if everything is as agreed. The money is here in the box, $15,000. I hope you never live to spend a penny of it. You should not hate Jaru. He has been, how you say, very reasonable. You stole $30,000, Sahib. Yeah, here you are. 15000 in new bills. Count them. I want to be sure you get every last dollar. New bills? But no, Sahib, these are the same bills you embezzled. Naturally. But I, I cannot accept this. What? I cannot be in possession of stolen money, Sahib. I could never spend it. No, Sahib, this will not do. Well, it'll have to do. I can't pay any other way. I am afraid you must find another way, Sahib. How? Where can I get $15,000 in different bills? In the bank where you work. You can make, how you say, an exchange. What do you take me for? That'll be a dead giveaway in my finish. No, that's out. It is the only way, unless... You desire to go to prison? Oh. Oh, if I don't do as you say, you'll go to the police. You leave me no choice, Sahib. You've gone too far, Jaru. I'm caught either way. You give me no choice. Sahib, no. Put down that knife. Convenient to you to have these daggers hanging around your tent, Jaru. Perfect for what I have to do. Stop. You are insane. Get away. Oh, Jaru, you saw too much in that crystal ball. Much too much. No, I... <laughs> You've done it, Hal. Added murder to theft. And you stand there trying to collect your senses. You gaze around vacantly, then wipe your fingerprints from the knife, put it back in its scabbard, and all the while your mind gropes for a way out of this, a means of escape. Suddenly you remember your date with Millie. You were to pick her up at 7.30, drive her to the carnival ground. You look at your watch, your mind forming an idea. You stoop down... Take the incriminating $10 bill from Jaru's pocket. Toss it into the shoebox with the new bills Jaru refused. As you slip outside and walk to your car, you know exactly what you must do. And speeding toward Millie's apartment, you pray that you can get away with it. At 7.30, you stop the car a block away from Millie's apartment and hurry into a drugstore phone booth. This is the important step, Hal, the move that will count the most. I wish to please talk with Mim Sahib, Mirana. Mirana? Oh, sure, just a minute. Mirana is for you. I think Jaru. For me? Thank you. Hello? This is Mirana. Salam, Mim Sahib, Mirana. This is Jaru. Jaru? Yes, Mim Sahib. I am calling from uh, what you call drugstore. The one near the carnival. I have appointment with Sahib Parker for crystal reading at 7 o'clock. Oh? It is now half past the hour. Have you seen him, Marana? No, Sahib. But he is to be here soon. Then Sahib Parker did not intend to keep appointment. Jaru does not like it. Shall I say you call? It is of no matter. Goodbye, Mum Sahib. You smile as you hang up, don't you, Hal? Because the trick, your imitation of the dead Jaru, seemed to work perfectly. And you've established the fact that Jaru was alive at 7.30. It could be impossible for you to have killed him and then called for Millie far across town only a few minutes later. You hurry to your car, drive the one block to Millie's apartment, 
Your hand trembles as you knock on the door. If Millie and Moran are convinced that it was Jaru they spoke to, you've nothing to worry about. Oh, come in, Hal. I'm almost ready. Ah. I'll be with you in a moment. Oh, you coming along, Marana? No, I have called for taxi cab. What for? There's plenty of room in the car for three no, and I'm... Saeed, you have proverb here. Two is company, three is crowd. Marana, take taxi. It will be here soon. Marana's peeved at you, Hal. Oh? What is it? What have I done? Tell him, Marana. To me, Saeed, you have done nothing. To Jaru, you have failed to keep appointment. He's angry. Oh, oh, I'm sorry about that. I forgot, and then I had something to do at my apartment, and before I knew it, it was past seven. I barely had time to make it here. Jaru phoned Marana a few minutes ago. He said you didn't intend to keep the appointment. Oh, well, I'll, I'll apologize when I see him. I will leave you now. Taxi would be waiting. Okay, Marana. See you in about half an hour. <laughs> You know, Millie, they're funny people, Marana and Ja Ru. Uh, I wouldn't worry about them. You said you were sorry. Yeah. What have you told Marana about me? Oh, just that you work at the Midland Bank. She didn't know what to tell her was. I had to draw a picture, put you in a cage. <laughs> How well do you know Marana? Oh, just since the carnival came here. I got the soft drink concession by offering to share my apartment with Marana. Sort of a bribe, but with rooms as scarce as they are. Yeah. Uh, what kind of a girl is she? Mm, hard to tell. Doesn't say much. Sensitive about her accent, I guess. Anyway, she goes her way and I go mine. Oh, here we are. Yeah, eight o'clock on the dot. Hal, Hal, look over there. What's wrong? Huh? By Giroux's tent. There's a crowd gathered. Business can't be that good. I wonder... Hey, come on, let's get over there. <laughs> Thank you. Come on, Hal, inside. Right with you, Millie. Well, hello. What is it? What's happened? You're Millie, eh? Millie Olmstead, that's right. And you're, uh, Parker? Yeah, why? What's it all about? I'm Lieutenant Adams. Adams, homicide. There's been a murder. Murder? Not Jeru. Yeah, that's his name. He was stabbed with one of these oriental daggers. Happened sometime within the past hour, as far as we can tell right now. I understand you people knew him pretty well. Who told you that? I never knew him before the carnival got here. I know. Your roommate, that Mirana, told us about you. How about you, Parker? Oh, I didn't know him very well either. He gave me a couple of readings, that's all. Uh-huh. As a matter of fact, I had an appointment with him tonight at 7. I didn't keep it. No? Can you prove that? Of course he can. Call for me at 7.30. He wouldn't have had time for a reading and then drive all the way to my place. Yeah, and Ja Rule was alive at 7.30, Lieutenant. How do you know that? Well, when I got to Millie's, he just phoned. Millie spoke to him. So did Marana. I see. Well, that leaves us exactly nowhere. And I'm afraid we won't find the answer to Ja Rule's murder in a crystal ball. <laughs> Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, since most of us do a lot more driving during this warm summer weather, I'd like to say a word about an item that has a lot to do with your driving pleasure. Gasoline. Wherever you travel on the Pacific coast, from Canada to Mexico, you'll find Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline. Almost 2,000 friendly dealer-owned Signal stations stand ready to serve you and honor your Signal credit card. And remember, when you power your car with Signal, you not only enjoy Signal's famous mileage, but also the thing which makes that mileage possible, extra engine efficiency. And of course, extra engine efficiency means more thrilling performance from your car. That's why Signal says, to be sure of the tops in gasoline quality, there are just two points to remember. One, in gasoline, it takes extra quality to go farther. And two, Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. And now back to the Whistler.
It's almost over, isn't it, Hal? The terrible nightmare you've been going through since the first time you talked to Jaru. Discover that he knew of your embezzlement at the Midland Bank, that he would turn you over to the police unless you gave him $15,000. A little more than an hour ago, you were here in the tent with Jaru. But Lieutenant Adams doesn't know that. And you're certain that he never will know, aren't you, Hal? Because your imitation of Jaru's voice in a phone call to Millie and Marana brought the dead crystal gazer to life, placed the time of his murder a half hour later than when you actually killed him. And that half hour gave you time to get back across town to pick up Millie. And so you've won, Hal. The lieutenant has eliminated you as a suspect. You stand by calmly, watching as he continues his routine check. The lieutenant leaves, and you talk quietly with Millie. Then the lieutenant returns with Marana. Oh, glad you waited, Parker. I have a few more questions, if you don't mind. Oh, not at all. I'll do whatever I can to help. Now, on this appointment you had with Jaru, why didn't you keep it? Well, I was late. I had to be at Millie's by 7.30. Uh Uh-huh. He was there right on time, lieutenant. At 7.30 sharp, huh? Just before Jaru was murdered. That's right. Like I said, Jaru called Millie and Marana here. He was talking to them practically as I arrived. Isn't that so, Marana? It would seem to be so, Sahib. What do you mean, seem? You were annoyed at me because of what Jaru said. You wouldn't even ride down here with us. Marana was more than annoyed, Parker. She was puzzled. After that call, she wanted time to think, figure things out for herself. That is right, Sahib. I have to know why this was done. Why, what was done? What are you saying, Marana? You talked to Ja Rue, didn't you? No, Saeed. I talked to you. What? Me? I don't talk like Ja Rue. You did on the telephone, Parker. What was it he said, Marana? He say, like Ja Rue always talk, Salam, Mem Saeed, Marana. I am calling from what you call drugstore. But, but Hal doesn't talk like that. What are you telling us, Marana? Yes, that's ridiculous. Couldn't have been anyone else but Ja Rue. You better explain, Marana. All these people, Saeed. You will make them step back. Sure. Jim. Yeah? Move the crowd back, will you? Get them away from here. I don't know what this is all about. What Ja Rule said, that's exactly how he talks, isn't it, Marana? Sure, to the general public. But not to me, you dope. All this lingo's been an act with us. He'd never talk like that to me. His name wasn't Ja Rule. It's Joe Thompson, and he was my uncle. Let that whistle be your signal for the signal oil program, The Whistler, each Wednesday at this same time. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speed, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Frank Lovejoy and Stanley Waxman. The Whistler was produced by George W. Allen with story by Gene Fromhurst, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>